So many characters, we needed twice the list. Hey guys, it's Phoebe, welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Game of Thrones characters. Think you know Game of Thrones? Click below to sign in with your Google or Facebook account and take the new trivia quiz on WatchMojo.com. We're taking a look at the best characters from the massive cast of Game of Thrones. We're including heroes, villains, and everyone in between. Let's take a look. Number 20, Eddard Ned Stark. You understand why I did it? John said he was a deserter. But do you understand why I had to kill him? Oh, where's the old way? The man who passes the sentence should swing the sword. The patriarch of the current generation of Starks, Ned Stark is also close friends with the late King Robert Baratheon, and serves as his hand. Brave, kind, and honorable to a fault, Ned elicits respect even from his enemies. While he initially comes across as one of the main protagonists, Ned's shocking and unjust execution quickly demonstrated that honor and honesty are no shield when you play the Game of Thrones. Nevertheless, Ned's impact on his children, particularly his bastard son slash nephew Jon Snow, creates ripples throughout the show. And there's no overstating how pivotal he is to the series, despite his comparatively short time on screen. Number 19, Bran Stark. Bran! I'm not really. Not anymore. The second youngest Stark son, Bran begins the series loving climbing and shooting bows, but his curiosity and the Lannisters put him on a different path after he loses the use of his legs. However, despite his new lack of personal mobility, Bran develops Green Seer and Warg abilities, which give him second sight and the power to possess animals and the simple-minded. Like the lovable Hodor. His journey may be sparse compared to some others on this list, but the places and times it takes Bran make him one of the show's most fascinating and strange characters. When the long night comes again, I need to be ready. Number 18, Sandor the Hound Clegane. You lived your life for the king. You're gonna die for some chickens. Someone is. Once a sworn sword to House Lannister, but not a knight, never a knight, Sandor Clegane, better known as the Hound, is a cynical and ferocious man, jaded by the brutal realities of the world, which he sees epitomized in his brother the Mountain, whom he loathes, the Hound nevertheless manages to become a better person as the series goes on, bonding with Arya and Sansa Stark, and joining the heroes in their battle against the White Walkers. What matters? I believe, is that there's something greater than us. And whatever it is, it's got plans for Sandor Clegane. And he manages to do so while delivering some of the bluntest and most darkly comedic lines in the series. In his final moments, Sandor finally got revenge on his older brother, and lost his life in the process. <laughs> Number 17, Rob Stark. If we do it your way, Kingslayer, you'd win. We're not doing it your way. The eldest son of Ned and Catelyn Stark, Rob has his father's honor and his mother's passion, making for a potent combination. After the loss of his father, Rob is thrust into a leadership role and declared king in the north leading his men in rebellion against the South and to reclaim Rob's sisters. However, Rob's integrity and his lust prove a detriment to him, as despite winning nearly every battle, he still loses the war. His adherence to honor alienates some of his own men, while his passion leads to an ill-advised marriage that ultimately costs him his life. Even so, we look back on the King in the North fondly. Number 16. Braun. You don't fight with honor. No. He did. A pragmatic mercenary, Braun becomes fast friends with his frequent employer Tyrion Lannister after defending him in a trial by combat. Their honest, if often unscrupulous friendship and incredibly witty banter is a definite highlight of the series. Bronn later becomes a friend and companion of Tyrion's brother Jaime, and proves himself to have hidden depths of bravery. So Jaime, Rick on. Dick on. <laughs> there aren't many who can say they've played chicken with a dragon. 
Although somewhat amoral, Bronn has a decent enough heart and he's a tremendously entertaining rogue, no matter who he's sold his sword to. That's how all the great houses started, isn't it? With a hard bastard who was good at killing people. Kill a few hundred people, they make you a lord. Kill a few thousand, they make you king. Number 15, Catelyn Stark. <gasps> they have your sisters. We have to get the girls back. And then we will kill them all. Ned's wife and the mother of his children, mostly, Catelyn is a complex character. Although arguably more intelligent than her husband, as she often gives sound, moderating advice to Rob, she also makes several costly mistakes in trusting the wrong people, such as Littlefinger, whose betrayal led to Ned's death. However, she's also protective of her family and will do anything to reunite them upon their separation, even if it means betraying their trust. Proud, compassionate, and absolutely fierce, Catelyn is one of the show's best mothers, her treatment of Jon notwithstanding. Everything that's happened since then, all this horror that's come to my family, it's all because I couldn't love a motherless child. Number 14, Brienne of Tarth. Brienne of Tarth, you may ask anything of me you desire. It is within my power, it is yours. Your Grace, I ask the honor of a place in your King's Guard. From Catelyn, let's turn to her sworn sword. Brienne may be a woman, but she's more of a knight than most of the men in Westeros, keeping to a code of honor and proving more than a match for most people she's faced in combat, including the formidable Hound. Her personality and skill in battle have earned her many admirers, both from fans and within the show, such as Tormund Giantsbane. Noble, humble, and loyal, Brienne is a true knight of the Seven Kingdoms. Arise, Brienne of Tarth, a knight of the Seven Kingdoms. Number 13, Olenna Tyrell. This city is made brighter by my presence. Is that your usual line, Lord Varys? You here to seduce me? A little obvious, perhaps. Oh, no, please. Seduce away, it's been so long. The formidable matriarch of House Tyrell, Olenna may have passed on many lessons in politics to her granddaughter Marjorie, but she's still the better Tyrell in our books. The so-called Queen of Thorns has the wit and tongue as pointed as her nickname suggests. Nearly everything she says is a sarcastic or cutting remark. Her mind is just as sharp, running her house with intelligence and success for many years, and deftly navigating the devious politics of Westeros, even committing an assassination. You don't think I'd let you marry that beast, do you? While she's outmaneuvered and faces her end, Olenna goes out on her own terms and has the last word, as she often did in life. We raise a toast to you, Lady Olenna. Tell Cersei, I wanted to know it was me. Number 12, Davos Seaworth. When I sit the Iron Throne, you'll be my hand. Your Grace. I pray I serve you well. I expect you'd be the first crabber's son to wear the badge. A smuggler turned knight, Davos Seaworth may come from humble origins, but he's able to stand toe to toe with some of the highest of highborns in the show. First acting as Hand of the King to Stannis Baratheon, Davos takes up with Jon Snow after the death of the former, and the latter. Although unable to read before the series begins, Davos is nevertheless an eloquent speaker and a wise man winning many to his side with persuasive arguments and speeches. While he may not be skilled in battle, given his missing fingers, Davos is definitely a man we'd want in our corner. In Bravos, thieves are not rewarded with titles. Well, strictly speaking, I didn't do the thieving. That would be the pirates. I just moved what they stole from one place to another. Number 11, Varys. The storms come and go. The big fish eat the little fish, and I keep on paddling. The spy master of the Seven Kingdoms, nicknamed the Spider, Varys is a hard man to peg down. A eunuch and a foreigner, Varys attains his position through maintaining a vast network of informants that span nearly half the known world. Although self-serving to a degree, Varys primarily seeks to maintain balance and peace in the realm by mitigating the excesses of the powerful who play the game. To do so, he plays it extremely well himself, and his banter-filled rivalry and mutual respect with other powerful players helps weave a brilliant and entertaining character. The absence of desire 
leaves one free to pursue other things, such as. Number 10, Peter Littlefinger Baelish. I did warn you not to trust me. The only man to rival Varys in the spies and information department, Peter Baelish, better known as Littlefinger, lacks his fellow players' scruples and is entirely self-absorbed. An opportunistic manipulator and social climber of the highest order, Littlefinger pulls strings that have far-reaching consequences and lead to untold amounts of death and suffering, all in pursuit of his own ambitions and desires. Whether you hate him or admire him for his audacity and cunning, there's no denying that Game of Thrones wouldn't be where it is without Littlefinger's machinations. Chaos isn't a pit. Chaos is a ladder. Number 9. Samuel Tarly. I yield! Please, no more! A brother of the Night's Watch, Samuel Tarly is not a typical recruit to the group that guards the realms of men. Overweight and not particularly skilled in combat, Sam prefers the scholarly pursuits and his research and knowledge come in handy many times on and beyond the wall. That isn't to say he lacks courage either, as he takes part in battles of both words and swords, and can speak eloquently when the need arises. Open the f gate! I never heard you curse before. Yes, well, let's get used to it. Sam may have one of the biggest hearts in Westeros, and if anyone in the show deserves a happy ending, it's him. <laughs> Number 8. Tywin Lannister The future of our family will be determined in these next few months. We could establish a dynasty that will last a thousand years, or we could collapse into nothing, as the Targaryens did. The intimidating head of House Lannister, Tywin is almost single-handedly responsible for his family's fortunes and initial reputation, for good and ill. A masterful military tactician and political mind, Tywin has few equals in either field and uses his impressive intellect to advance his house's fortunes at every opportunity. It's a rare enough thing, a man who lives up to his reputation. However, his ruthlessness extends to his own children as well, and the fact that he treats them like pawns rather than people ultimately leads to the undoing of his legacy and his life. Even so, while he's far from a good or honorable man, Tywin is still worthy of respect. Enough. We'll go back to my chambers and speak with some dignity. I can't go back there. She's in there. Are you afraid of a dead whore? Number 7. Cersei Lannister Did it ever occur to you that I might be the one who deserves your confidence and your trust? Not your sons. Not Jaime or Tyrion, but me. Cersei may not be the best or brightest Lannister, but there's no arguing her impact on the show. Cersei is a fantastic villainess. Proud and spiteful, Cersei is desperate to hold on to her position as queen, and is willing to betray and murder anyone who gets in her way. She manages to be nearly sympathetic too, although her deeply flawed outlook and numerous despicable acts keep her just shy of being likable. For as much as she rails against others for her circumstances, Cersei is usually her own worst enemy, and many of us can certainly relate to that. I don't believe you. Number 6. Jaime Lannister The things I do for love. <laughs> Tyrion's elder brother, Jaime initially comes across as, well, a prick. He's arrogant, sarcastic, an apparent oathbreaker, and his incestuous relationship with his sister is just gross. When the king turned to flee, I drove my sword into his back. Burn them all, he kept saying. Burn them all. However, there's more to Jaime than meets the eye. His broken oath was to save lives, and his relationship with Cersei, well, as he says, We don't choose whom we love. There's no excuse for Bran, though. Even so, the loss of his skill with a sword and some time spent with people besides his sister slash lover bring out the better sides of him. Jaime is, without a doubt, the most complicated and conflicted character on the show. Look at me! Just look at me! Nothing else matters. <laughs> Number 5. Sansa Stark You have to be smarter than father. You need to be smarter than Rob. I loved them, I missed them, but they made stupid mistakes and they both lost their heads for it. And how should I be smarter? By listening to you. That'd be so terrible. The eldest surviving Stark child as of this writing, Sansa is initially a starry-eyed and naive girl who is ignorant of the harsh realities of the world. 
However, over much of the series, she's abused by her suitors, or else used as a political bargaining chip, and her eyes are opened in frequently brutal ways. Yet Sansa endures these trials and learns from many of those who sought to use her to become a savvy leader and player herself. While we'd prefer that she hadn't had to go through much of the things that happened to her, we're still glad that Sansa's inner strength has seen her through to where she is now. Thank you for all your many lessons, Lord Baelish. I will never forget them. Number 4. Arya Stark Finally a girl is no one. A girl is Arya Stark of Winterfell. And I'm going home. Let's follow up one Stark daughter with another. Arya is everything Sansa is not, eschewing ladylike pursuits and delighting in fighting. Her own journey after the Stark separation is marked with death, as she even trains to be an assassin. Arya falls in with various outlaws and killers, who all come to be pseudo-mentors to her, with their influence giving her a more cynical and fatalistic viewpoint than she begins the series with. Yet we can't help but admire Arya's skills, as well as her desire for vengeance and her drive to see it through. When people ask you what happened here, Tell them the North remembers. Tell them winter came for House Frey. Oh, and she killed the Night King, pretty much single-handedly defeating the Army of the Dead in the process. <laughs> Number three, Jon Snow. This is Jon Snow. He's king in the north. He may know nothing, but we still love the guy. The apparent bastard son of Ned Stark, Jon Snow joins the Night's Watch, coming face to face with the White Walkers and their army of the dead beyond the wall. Like Ned, Jon is an honorable man who inspires loyalty with his forthright nature, bravery, and kindness. His popularity extends to the fandom as well, as his death and resurrection just about broke the internet. And the mystery of his parentage has been one of the major talking points amongst fans until his true identity was finally revealed. He loved her. And she loved him. Number two, Tyrion Lannister. See, I told Varys that I was giving the princess to the Greyjoys. I told Littlefinger that I planned to wed her to Robin Aaron. I told no one that I was offering her to the Dornish. No one but you. The second son of Tywin Lannister, Tyrion shares his father's impressive intellect, but tempers it with an actual conscience and a dry wit. Continually underestimated and vilified by his family and many others for his stature and love of women, Tyrion is actually quite gifted in the Game of Thrones, and braver than most give him credit for. You enjoy the game. I do. Last thing I expected. And you play it well. I'd like to keep playing it. His repartee with the other big players, brilliantly performed scenes, and many hilarious one-liners have made him a much-beloved fan-favorite character. Tyrion Lannister. I name you Hand of the Queen. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I will be your champion. You sure you don't want a horse? I would want a horse. Horses are faster than men. Horses are dumber than men. Strike hard and true, Jon Snow. Or I'll come back and haunt you. I brought shame into my house. I broke my father's heart. I forfeited the right to claim this soul. It's yours. It served you well your children after you. There's nothing quite like it, is there? The love of the people. Now I suppose you wouldn't know. Number one, Daenerys Targaryen. Like Sansa, Daenerys Targaryen was an innocent young woman who, after enduring many hardships, became a major player. But her transformation over the course of the series is quite dramatic. Cast out into the wilder world, she manages to acquire dragons, armies, and powerful allies through her ideals, force of will, and charisma. I was born to rule the Seven Kingdoms. And I will. Daenerys is the most iconic Game of Thrones character, and if you don't believe us, just ask all the parents who named their children after her. Though some of them may have regretted that after she embraced her madness. Oh, no! 
after you agree with our picks? Check out this video and be sure to subscribe for more great content.